I've sold over a million dollars worth of paper on Shopify. What a wild claim, right? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that and exactly how you can copy me more importantly. So this was an e-commerce store that I had and uh, just for full transparency, it was dollars, uh, but it was actually a British uh, UK based store. So we did 936,000 uh, pounds, which equates to about 1.18, just under $1.2 million in sales, which is what we did on this store. So there's three main points you're probably looking at in the title of this, which is the million dollars, the paper and Shopify. Uh, and I'm gonna break each point down right now for you. So first things first, the million dollars. Uh, we've seen that that comes from the 900 grand's worth of sales in pounds. Uh, how did we get 900K's worth of sales? Well, very simply, um, or maybe not simply, <laughs> we got 17,000 people to pay us 53 pounds each. The biggest question you had right now is how the hell do you manage to convince 17,000 people to buy your product? I'm gonna tell you right now, everything in business is a numbers game. You know, if you have enough eyeballs on your offer, uh, a percentage of them will buy. It might be 0.01%, but then you know that's your conversion rate. To get 17,000 orders, we had to have 856,000 people view our website. Of those 856,000 people, 1.8% of them actually placed an order. So that was really, really nice. This is uh, not a great conversion rate in e-commerce standards by any means, but I mean, money's money, right? It still made us that amount of cash. Okay, so we understand to get those 17,000 orders, we needed 850,000 people, but hang on, Dan, you're missing a big point here. How did you get almost a million people to visit your website? Well, very simply, I spent just under half a million pounds on Facebook ads. Right, before you click off, I'm not asking you to spend half a million quid to get these results. You'll be shocked at the amount that I started this brand with. And I said, hey, I think this product can convert. I'm gonna test some Facebook ads uh, and I'm gonna throw, guess how much at it? I won't tell you yet. Uh, and if it doesn't perform, then cool. I've lost that amount of money, I'll walk away. I started this brand with 500 pounds, okay? That is all the money I put into this brand. When you're saying, well, how the hell did you spend 400 grand on ads to get all those sales? Very simply, those 500, that 500 pounds generated X amount of revenue, let's say a few thousand pounds of revenue. And then that few thousand pounds we put back into ads and it made another few thousand pounds of revenue. And then that made tens of thousands. And then it's just like a snowball effect and it's not your own money. Remember, I only put 500 pounds from my bank into this ads manager right here. Great, so I can put 500 pounds into something and make almost a million quid. How the hell do you connect those two dots and, and you know where do I even get started? That brings me on to the second point of this statement, which is, okay, now we know how we get the million dollars and how many people we need to see our offer. Uh, how, how the hell does paper come into this? Well, bit of clickbait, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, that was just the main ingredient of our product, if you like. So our product was a personalized gift product. And this uh, was actually just made of paper and it's as simple as that our costs are extremely low i'm actually going to show you my exact profit and loss um, from this uh, product we sold it at 44 pounds and 99 pence and you're thinking whoa whoa whoa, hang on a minute you got this many people to pay you 53 pounds but your product price is only 47.99 there's other things like upsells that i won't go into so you know an extra 10 pounds for next day shipping or you know extra 20 pounds for uh, another product half price you know all these different offers you can add in on the back end and um, yeah, but the main product was 44.99 plus a few upsells, which is how our average value was 53 pounds. So obviously I'm not gonna reveal the product in this video, maybe in a future video, because I did sell this brand, but there's more to come on that. And I've got a really cool story to tell in a future video. However, we're gonna save that for the next one. So out of this 44.99, how much of it is actually going back into our pocket? Now, first things first, the cost of the paper to, to make this product was about 90p which is you know, not bad at all. Um, there was a bit of decoration on there for 9p and the postage and packaging was uh, a couple of quid. And that includes the envelope and the Royal Mail cost because this was a UK brand and that was the service that we used to fulfill the orders. And then Stripe or Shopify payments, if you use them, takes a lovely £1.35 from every purchase. Those that are good at maths will understand that this is an absolutely insane 90% profit margin um yeah this is a great margin i mean i see people starting e-com stores all the time i have a program actually where i mentor a few people and they're starting products with like 50 percent margins um and then they join my program and they understand okay this is just not enough to make it work i personally don't even entertain any products with less than a 70 percent margin nowadays but if you can get it to like 80 percent plus then you're in a really good spot 
this one exceptionally high at 90 percent um and uh, you know if we times those sales that we did by that 90 percent leaves us with 843 thousand pounds of gross profit now big factor that we did mention before was the four hundred thousand pounds in ad spend so if we minus the ad spend um then obviously that figure becomes a lot less impressive but hey i'm about to show you the harsh real raw reality of e-commerce and uh you know we're going to talk profit in this video we're not going to talk about just the revenue which was from the title which obviously i needed to say to get some clicks i wish it was just as simple as deducting the ad spend from our gross profit however there are a couple more expenses that you do need to run an e-com store uh, one of those being subscriptions there's a bunch of subscriptions that go into running an e-commerce brand uh, things like email marketing sms marketing uh, shop apps that allow you to have like upsells or fancy banners at the top of your page uh, these all add up and uh, this was about fifteen thousand pounds out of our profit margin then of course the videos in these adverts weren't me talking about the product we hired multiple different actors a complete diverse range of people although usually female uh, in this sector a uh, sector performed a lot better so we spent about four thousand pounds on creatives creatives just meaning the actual video or photo that was used in the ad then we can see our operating profit after all of our expenses is £394,000. It's not a million, but it's not bad either. Even if this was your one and only business and you did nothing else outside of this. Right then, now you know the million dollars, how it was made and the product we were selling and the margins on that. Lastly, we need to figure out, okay, what did I actually have to do to run this store? Now, Obviously we could talk about Shopify and how to set up a Shopify store and maybe I'll make a tutorial on that. I actually have a full course, but uh, this video is not to shill that in any way. Look, you can find a video on YouTube on how to make a Shopify store and how to write your product name and how to set a product price. I wanna show you about actually running the business now. So if we look at uh, the Shopify, which is the third point, we've talked about the million dollars, we talked about the paper, and now we're gonna be talking about how we did it on Shopify. We've got two options when we're starting a Shopify store um, and you know they're very very different so option one and this is the route that I went down with this exact store uh, is hire and delegate so you reinvest your profits into hiring a team to do all of the tasks to run the store fun fact when we were making the most money with this store which was about hundred thousand dollars a month in revenue and like fifty thousand dollars a month or just under in net profit um, this was when I was working maybe one or two hours a week like my only job was to talk to the team, make sure things were getting done uh, and occasionally putting out some fires, you know, if an ad account get banned or something like that. So to hire and delegate, it's going to take a chunk out of your profits, right? So I spent about £40,000 on team costs and that included some bonuses. So it technically could have been a little bit less. And then the big one, another £50,000 on agency costs. What does an agency do? Well, actually, I got an agency to run all of our ads. So I actually never ran ads for this store. I would obviously give them a budget and say, hey, look, this is how much we need to be profitable. If it's profitable, keep upping the budget, keep running new ads and uh, kind of run away with it. I would give them the content and then uh, they would just run away with it and run the ads. That was, of course, a really worthwhile investment. However, as a trade off for not doing basically any work on this brand, a big chunk of the profit was lost. So you'll remember that we were at 394K in profit by running the store ourselves. But here we are with a fully outsourced store still making 300,000 pounds, especially if you're coming from just a regular job, regular salary. This is enough to change your lifestyle completely and make you a very happy person. Of course, making a million dollars in sales sounds really, really cool, but I wanna give you a realistic expectation here. And 32% is even on the higher end for a lot of brands. You know, I know many brands running at like 10% net margin. However, this is just the way I like to run things. 30% is my sweet spot. We've had months at 50%, we've had months in a loss. So it really, it really depends on the brand, but uh, as long as you can average out around 30%, I'd say you're doing very, very well. So that's it for option one. You've outsourced, you've got your 300 grand, and that's gonna be you, mate. You're gonna be watching the Shopify notifications come in from a beach, uh, sipping a cocktail. Option two then, option two is, hey, look, I don't, I don't mind doing the work myself. I got a bunch of time. I wanna just dive in, do it all myself, and keep the full 394K for myself. Uh, that's absolutely fine, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now, and this is operating by yourself. So there are three main categories here we zoom out a little bit we got the advertising we got the fulfillment and we got the customer support these are the three areas that you're going to need to work on uh, in order to run the whole operation yourself so when it comes to advertising we have three main platforms right we've got the meta the google 
and the TikTok. Meta is Facebook and Instagram. They're grouped together. And when you run ads on Meta, they go out to both Facebook and Instagram unless you manually deselect one. And the ads are gonna look a little bit like this, you know, um, typical Facebook ad style. You can use photos, you can use videos. This is not my brand, but just a great example of what Facebook ads look like. Don't neglect organic either. So by organic, all I mean is posting on your Facebook page for free without paying for ads. Uh, that is still something you should be doing on every platform. Obviously, Google is different. You can't just post on Google, um, but improving your SEO is always something that should be in the back of your mind. Uh, you can also do Google ads that look a little bit like this. And then, of course, TikTok. You know, you want to be posting every day, organic TikToks, uh, trends, all that kind of stuff, making it tie in with your product. That's a great way to get some free traffic. You know, I have a guy in my program. He was making like 50K a month from just TikTok organic, no ads, which is unbelievable. But of course, TikTok does have their own paid ads manager as well. So you can run TikTok. You can make TikToks and then run them as ads, put a little bit of money behind it and then analyze how many clicks you're getting to your website. And obviously, if you're making more purchases than you're spending, you carry on doing that and happy days. So that's advertising. Uh, also included in that is obviously you need to get content for the ads. So things like uh, these videos here, you'll have to either record them yourself or pay somebody to do it. Same goes for the photos, take them yourself, pay somebody to do it. This is all super, super easy stuff. Obviously the media buying, by as in, I mean, running the ads is not easy stuff because that takes time to learn. But the only way you're gonna learn is by testing because every brand is different. No one strategy fits all. You're gonna have to just test some ads and uh, iterate from there. Number two is fulfillment. So when you start making sales, they're gonna have to get to your customers somehow and you don't have a warehouse or a team of people to do this. So guess what? It's gonna be you. You're gonna be putting it into the boxes or the envelopes and you're gonna be printing out the labels and sticking it on the packages. So here's an example of one of my brands here. We did 10K on, uh, on a Black Friday, I think it was. And uh, yeah, there you go. All of our packages ready. And this is actually this, um, this uh, personalized gift brand that we're talking about. So main component being paper. Obviously, if you've not got a personalized product, it's gonna be even easier because you can pre-package them every week, every month, and just stick a postage label on when they're ready to go out. In the UK, you can use Royal Mail and you can actually pay for a service where they come to your house or your office every single weekday to pick up the post. Um, but don't get me wrong, I had my fair share of trips to the post office with a big bundle of packages when I first started. Number three then is customer support. Once you start getting clicks on your website, you're gonna get emails, you're gonna get messages asking different questions. But the beauty of customer support with Ecom is you're only gonna get three, four main questions and that's it. You're just gonna get those same questions repeated over and over. Uh, there's not really much variation to it at all. When it comes to customer support, these are the things you can expect to be asked. Pre-sales questions, so questions about the product. Does it have this feature? Does it do this? Uh, is it safe for this? pre-sales questions and you should have templates for each of these answers, okay? Where is my order? Very, very simply, you'll be able to go on your Shopify, check if you've dispatched it or not. Uh, can I cancel my order before you send it and can I return it if I don't like it or can I return it now I've received it? Once you've had these questions a few times, you'll be able to build out templates just like I did. So if you're using just Gmail, even they have a template feature. So if you get very common pre-sales questions or returns, you know, questions, you can literally have a template so that you'll just be on your laptop every day, replying to emails, pasting in the templates. So you're not actually having to write out these emails, but this is gonna be you for about an hour a day when you start out. All right, so we've covered exactly how I did all of this and the tasks that I had to carry out in order to achieve those results. The main question on your mind is gonna be, okay, that's great, Dan, so happy for you that you made all this money, but how can I actually do this myself? I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step right now so you have no excuse not to get started. Number one, you've got to find a product. Very obvious, but obviously very key. Scroll through Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all of your social medias. Take note of all the ads you see, and even on TikTok, the organic videos you see that include products, okay? Literally, I'm talking any product in the world. Like when you're out and about, you need to shift your mindset to just always look for products. So now, when in my daily life, it's a bit of a curse because every time I see a product, I'm like, okay, so the margin's about this. Uh, they're probably selling this much, and, and your mind just needs to work like that. You can use things like the ad libraries that Meta and TikTok use to see what ads are currently being run on Facebook. Uh, so if you see a certain product or a certain brand, you can actually search them up on this ad library. Just Google Facebook ad library or TikTok ad library. And you can see exactly what ads they're running and which ones they've been running the longest. And obviously if they're running an ad for a long time, they're spending money for a long time and they wouldn't be doing that unless it was generating good returns. 
You can also use spy tools that use these ad libraries but give you more control on the filters. So you can say, hey, I only want to see ones that have got 100,000 impressions, which means they're spending a decent amount of money on the ad, so it must be performing. Then once you see a product, you want to make sure it's a problem solver or at least attacks a pain point or an emotional uh, connection, just something that gives you uh, a bit of an edge when it comes to selling it. So obviously you can sell a woman's dress, that's great but it's, it's more of an indulgence, it's more of an impulse purchase. So you're gonna have a harder time selling that as opposed to something like an acne remover, which solves a genuine problem and you can market really, really well because it's, you know, you're targeting people's insecurities and giving them a solution so they don't have to have that insecurity anymore. And that is what's gonna be the difference between a winning and a losing product. I would avoid any seasonal trending products that have the chance to just die out once the trend is over. And personally, I look for 70% plus when it comes to margin, just because uh, you know you wanna have enough room to test with your ads. And out of that 70% that's remaining, uh, you're gonna have to spend a certain percentage of that acquiring each customer through your ad spend. Once you've found a product, head over to websites like Alibaba to buy it in bulk or AliExpress to drop ship. Dropship just means that they will send it to your customer for you, so you only have to buy one at a time. Alibaba is more for bulk orders where you can buy, let's say, a thousand units and get a cheaper price than if you were dropshipping. So number two then is actually create your Shopify store. This could not be easier. They've got this new offer right now where it literally costs one pound to uh, get it to trial for three months. Um, so one pounds a month for three months. And if it doesn't perform after three months, you can just cancel it and you've lost three pounds. Minimal risk, a high, high reward. You can literally use a free theme. That's exactly what I did for at least my first £100,000 worth of sales. No fancy website, literally just make it look clean, professional. And of course, add some nice copy, you know, check out the competitors' websites, see how they lay out their product pages, see how they write about the product, what kind of language they use, and literally just copy it, put your own spin on it, and you're good to go. Number three then is you're gonna to need to launch your ads. Now, first things first, we talked about getting content. Uh, obviously, you can film yourself, you can take photos yourself. If you want to get somebody else to do it, let's say you're a guy and you're doing a female beauty product, you go over to Fiverr and you type in UGC video, right? If you type in the words UGC video, a bunch of creators are gonna come up. You can pay them to create you some video ads. You can give them a script or you can tell them to just do it themselves. Uh, and then you're, you're gonna get some content that you can use in your Facebook or TikTok ads. You can use free softwares like canva.com, which is basically like a simplified Photoshop and you can just edit up your static photos to make them look a little bit nicer and of course add on any text or any offers you've got let's say 20 percent off or whatever it might be uh, and then upload them all to meta uh, tiktok or wherever you're going to run your ads publish them and send them out to the world then it's a case of seeing if you get sales or not obviously the ads that don't get sales kill them off and if it does get sales consider upping the budget if none of them perform, then you're gonna to wanna to make some better ads. You're gonna to wanna to focus on better hooks, you know, more emotional reasons for people to buy, make sure the pain point is really, really clearly stated and your solution is really, really clearly described. Uh, however, if you're doing all of that and it's still not performing, then don't waste too much money, move on to the next product uh, and go again. Step four, retire. Thanks for watching.